Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to be able to speak to you today about this incredible, unique, original, and really powerful film. Um, maybe for people who aren't familiar with it, you could just give us a brief introduction. What can audiences expect if they watch Neptune Frost? <laughs> well, I think audiences can expect to be exhilarated and to have an experience uh, uh, perhaps like they haven't had in the cinema uh, before um, in relationship to it being a science fiction musical, which are two genres that, you know, are rarely connected. And um, the attention that um, we pay to the images and to the sound and to the story, it's a, it's a yeah, it's, it's a beautiful journey. I think it's a wonderful trip. And so, um, yeah. And, you know, it's so kind of um, epic and ambitious, but incredibly executed. It's hard to know where to begin talking about it, but maybe we can start with the initial kind of idea, or at least the context that sort of gave birth to the idea, going back to you know, sort of the aftermath of the 2008 crash and kind of this, this huge gulf, um, if you like, between kind of, um, the have and the have nots and how technology just seems to have kind of emerged as another form of oppression um, and how that kind of gave birth to the original idea for, for the film that we see now. Yeah, um, I think uh, the idea was to <clears throat> to connect uh, all those or all those um, things uh, through a love story and uh, to see how uh, when we connect all those elements and start to see how they all like kind of weave together and create the narrative in which we live, uh, if we reclaim that narrative and if we pay attention to it, uh, we can um, be charged by it and uh, access um, superpowers. <laughs> Essentially, so, that. yeah. Uh, that's uh, the the that was the idea effectively to to we we were learning like everybody and 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 seeing and paying attention to a lot of uh, uh, you know things happening surrounding technology surrounding um, you know um, hacking and all those. Um, yeah, I mean, from that point forward, I mean, browsing our timelines, what we were, you know, witnessing when the project was conceived 2012, 2013, you, you, you had, uh, you know, we had experienced the Arab Spring, uh, WikiLeaks, Chelsea Manning, uh, the, the fact that American evangelists had arrived on the continent of Africa and seduced uh, African governments in, like Kenya, Tanzania to pass anti-gay laws. Um, we were also learning about uh e-waste, which is the place where all of our tech goes to die, and simultaneously learning about coltan and cobalt, the, the precious minerals that are sourced like lithium um, to fuel modern-day technology, and simultaneously learning that the way that those things are mined um, rely heavily on the kind of analog form of exploitation that we've known for a long time. And so how do we really move forward? Um, and and as Anisia mentioned, like um, our film is about how love connects and of course over you know the 10-year period you developed it, it's kind of evolved and and gone through different iterations and 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 potentially been in different mediums i know at one point it was going to be maybe a stage musical there's the graphic novel um the music um martin luther martin luther king and the, the album which you produced as well um so maybe you can talk a bit about the form that it's now taken and and how it reached uh, the form that we see now well, it was it was always conceived as a musical and as a graphic novel. Um, the big surprise is that the film beat the graphic novel. The graphic novel is is almost done. Um, of course, the difference is that a film can have a hundred people working on it, and you know, with the graphic novel, it's the illustrator working away like I'm almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> so, so you know that that's one thing. Um, but as a musical, we initially thought that we would do it for the stage. Uh, we were writing for Broadway or the West End, you know, and uh, and had approached the producers of Fela the Musical um, with our with our script for the stage. Um, and they loved it. Um, Ruth and Stephen Handel loved it. And but their response was, but it kind of feels like it would be wonderful as a film. And that kind of liberated Anisia and I to begin thinking about, well, if it is a film, 
we could shoot on location, um, the actors we could use, the language it could, you know, be in all of all of those like real time elements. Like, OK, if it's if it's a film, we could actually shoot it on the continent. And so from there, yeah. Yeah, from there for, you know, a full other world that like, kind of open up. Um, and, you know, we were nourished by the, that ID too. Um, so the story took that shape with, you know, that possibility of um, of being inclusive of that space and of the people. Um, and so we shot in Rwanda um, and um, with an entirely Rwandan and Burundian cast and crew um, with extraordinary actors um, and performers in their own right. Um, really a, a renowned crew of artists who who are poets, dancers, choreographers, uh, actors, um, you know, just just extraordinary. And of course, with our costume and 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 production designer Cedric Mazero, so extraordinary artists as well. Um, yeah, it it's been an um, enormous uh, collaborative process. Mm. And it's got such a kind of bold and original aesthetic. So maybe you can say a few words about perhaps some of the influences that you take and, you know, the, the decisions that you made. It's kind of perhaps intentionally kind of lo-fi, the Afrofuturistic and using the kind of um, the e-trash, you know, as a lot of the kind of uh, to, to make up the, this world that we're entered into and the, the fluorescence on the on the bicycle wheels, you know, sending us into that kind of like uh, dreamscapes. So yeah, maybe you can talk a bit about the the aesthetics of and, and, and look and feel of the film. Well, you know, I think we were very much, um, we, we had the desire to be in conversation with the new wave of artists that uh, from the continent. There is a wonderful um, new uh, movement of um, artists from, various background from music to visual artists to sculpture to you know photographers and 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 cinematographers that are doing like a very uh, very beautiful and and new work and um i was we were just you know as we were researching etc we're encountering those 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 work and the zero waste fashion the zero waste you know um uh id uh actually was like very um inspiring mm -hmm. and so since we were talking about that idea of 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 the e-waste camp so the, that pile of material that it's there and that is um you know, often like they come on a plane with the waste that, <laughs> you know, that, that, we, throw that we throw away and go um, back and go back with the with with the cobalt and 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 the, um, the minerals to put in the new laptops, etc. So there was something very interesting in terms of aesthetic, and in terms of uh, uh, um, you know colors and in, uh, between the minerals and the waste <laughs> i think we had very uh fantastic things to work with yeah and 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 so starting from inspiration like that and connecting it to because a lot of the artists that Anisi mentioned that we were inspired by young contemporary african artists um are all a part of that sense of uh putting a new gaze on how we see the continent, you know, and how we see people from the continent and how we see cultures and mythologies from the continent. Um, and 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 it's that that uh, that makes people run around with terms like Afrofuturism or what have you. But really what it is, is is losing the documentarian gaze, the miserablest gaze that that the West has has profited from you know in 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 how they look at the continent and so putting ourselves first in our stories our ideas of the future and our ideas even of the present in those stories um is is what we focused on and 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 then of course there's in in the film there's the underlying idea that if this is the land where you know we bury our dead where we grow and plant our food and 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 these minerals are so rich that they feed the technology of the world um well what's actually in those minerals i mean fossil fuels themselves say what they are you know they're fossil fuels and so are is it is it us that's powering these systems mm -hmm. and so the idea 
of waking up with that power and realizing that power is is essentially the 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 real concept of the film is that we are the technology and and what happens when um people begin to step into their power and so that's what you see happening over the course of the film is characters stepping uh more and more into their power mm -hmm. And of course, it being a musical, the music's very integral. Um, if you could talk us through a little bit about um, the approach you took on on you know, um, how you first of all came up with the idea for the music, how it's infused and, and the different styles, you know, some of it's full song, some of it's spoken word, and it kind of also um, combines kind of more traditional music styles with, you know, electronic um, kind of, I guess, doing that kind of combination that you see, see visually as well. So talk a few bit. Bit about that, please. Well, you know, Anisi and I both come from theater, and 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 both uh, have had somewhat of a hunger of what we desire to 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 see, uh, either on stage or on screen. And and so, for me, as a New York theater kid who grew up going to musicals and participating in musical theater, um, I had a hunger for a particular type of musical that reflected my musical palette. I couldn't understand why we had moved so far ahead uh, in time and we still were struggling to hear uh, drum machines and and a certain type of bass, uh, you know, like uh, in, in a musical, why it had to stick to the, the sort of like format that's given to a musical. Why isn't there room to explore? Um, and And so, the the film really reflects that for for us in the creative process you know um in fact once we conceptualize this idea of what we want to do the first step uh for me in terms of world building was creating sounds um so the music came came first in many ways in that it was through writing the music and trying to raising the question of what does digitaria you know this this mythical uh you know landscape where where our characters connect what does that world sound like? Um, was how um, we were able to find the voices of the characters and and the narrative arc and all that was through the music. Um, and simultaneously, Anisia, um, as who as you know is also the cinematographer of the film, um, was 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 there to 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 piece together images and build color palettes and 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 all this stuff. So we were feeding off of each other um while the music was kind of developing. And um and so yeah, I think the film reflects that too, because the, you, there is a central core of music uh in the film and and you know we wanted to uh, connect those dots between the ancient and the future um, or or and the present. So having those traditional drums like the Burundian, uh, you know, royal drums, the Himbaza Club who play the ensemble in our film to match that with, with drum machines and electronic sounds was the dream from, from its conception. Um, and 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 also it's part of the metaphor because we're we're looking at the drum as the first form of wireless communication. Mm. And maybe you can also talk a bit about kind of some of the highlights and challenges of making it and shooting on location. I know you had a lot of the actors, kind of non-professional actors, um, Burundi refugees that were in Rwanda. You know, did you encounter any real challenges in that shoot? Or, and were there any moments that really stood out to you? Well, I think, you know, a film like this, it's only a challenge. <laughs> if you don't like challenges, you have nothing to do there. You know? <laughs> I think um, uh, the, the the way we wanted to make it to to stay, to remain the closest uh, to our authenticity and to the truth that we wanted to to speak about and to convey. Um, uh, I think um, I said truth because I think it's a film where there is a lot of sincerity. That there is something inherently. Um, I don't know how you you, you could. That is, um, Organic, uh... Yeah, it's 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 very much a film where we had to protect uh, more than anything else uh, to protect the, the vision, the idea, the the way we wanted to do it, and to fight to be able to do it as we were envisioning it. Because it's also a film that is talking about how we dream about ourselves. Mm -hmm how we see ourselves, how we project ourselves. And and um, 
it's a film about gaining that freedom, about reclaiming that freedom, um, to go into aesthetics that are ours, to um, explore music uh, that are, you know, maybe non-traditional for a musical, but to be sincere uh, with the love that we have for certain music and to propose that as a as an experience for the people. So um, the challenges were numerous. <laughs> we cannot, you know, yeah. um, start to, to go into one or two, but uh, I would say that the artists that are working with us um, on the film, in the film, crew and cast um, are all like, very much artist in their own rights. Um, it's really the crop of the yeah, the cream of the crop, the cream of the crop, as we <laughs> say, uh, in um, in Rwanda and in East Africa in general. Those are all consummate um, performers, uh, poets, uh, dancers, choreographers. I mean, and you name it. Uh, and so I do think that um, they they nourished a lot. Yeah, their the, the, energy. The process, yeah, the energy was what um, made us go for it. Like their enthusiasm, their uh, you know um, engagement um, was really what what what. Yeah, what what made us realize that we couldn't fail, that we had to that we had to execute it on a particular level, you know. Um, and and yeah, and so I think one of the ways that that's best expressed or explained is 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 looking at the language of the film. You know, the film is in Kinyaranda, uh, Kirundi, Swahili, French, a little bit of English, um, which really reflects how those actors and people in that region communicate, you know, with, with you know, um, using, being multilingual and using expressions that that work best in whichever language. And, and you know, Hollywood would have us from the jump say, well, okay, we're going to put it in English so that, you know, the outsider understands. And, and we're like, well, who no. Who is in it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or they'd say, you know, but who, who are you going to put in it? You know, like which A-list actor are you going to put in it? Um, so us defending and protecting the film meant, you know, uh, making sure that the people we wanted, the faces we wanted, the, the actors we wanted. The were, energy the, we wanted. Yeah, yeah. Was in it and that the language was there and that we didn't make those compromises, you know, in fact, we and we and we never entertained it because it was like, are, are you kidding me? You have an opportunity to hear a language you've never heard in a film before and you want to choose the easiest route. You know, it, it, it didn't make sense. Um, and so what excited us were the the, the risks, so to speak, the chances that we took in just protecting the vision and making sure that we executed the dream that we had. And we knew that that's what would excite uh, people, theater goers, audience members. Um, and ourselves. And ourselves, if we were able to reach them. And so the the middle people that stand in the way, producers and da 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 people concerned about money is what we had to protect it from in order to achieve reaching people. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different themes, which you've touched on so many already. Um, so I just wonder what you hope people will take away on, on, on all those different topics, you know, kind of how the capitalism and the, the current way technology is used, you know, kind of echoes um, themes of slavery from, from back in the day, um, how love can connect us, but also the gender fluidity of your of your main character. And, you know, is there a future world where, where we're not labeled and boxed in and, and people can have freedom to, to see themselves however they want without having to sort of take on a, an identity? Um, so, so what do you think the key themes are and, and the takeaways? That, I think you're right. I think it's that. I think people are going to have a glimpse into a world where that's the proposition that is... Uh, you know, it's, it's, then we cannot reveal the, the, the story really, but um, it is um, it is yeah. certainly a place where you're going to uh, have um, all those um, questions uh, and also um, propositions. <laughs> and it's also important to remember that, you know, like people look to the future, will there be a time in the future? But you have to understand that we acknowledge fully that there was also a time in the past that it is the, the rigidity imposed by colonial religions and practices that forced the gender binary, that forced the rigidity into how we think and how we see things having it to be one way or another. Um, so that we understand that that 
fluidity is not new. Um, just like the technology is not new when we talk about the drum as a first form of wireless communication and, and drum patterns being a form of coding. For example, you know, like that's that's one of the things, you know, um, that we aim to do with the film is is for people to walk away making connections between our our past selves, our present selves, and and the decisions that we make and how we operate our operating system in the world as we face challenges. Um, that we do have a choice um, to 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 be who we are, you know, in these times, and and with full acknowledgement of all the the things that we've become dependent on. And and lean on and what have you, but there is a way to 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 arrive in you know in life and or what have you in a more fair or more just way. And these are the questions our characters are are raising in the film. And thus, with that connection to the past, um, it's an origin story. So you can uh, also you, you know you the birth die. of yeah you witness the birth of, of what of, is possible of a of a yeah. Of, of what is possible, particularly through our, our main character, Neptune. Mm -hmm. I think about time, but just very quickly, you know, do you know what you're going to work on next? And, you know, obviously it's amazing that you're a real life couple collaborating together. Are you going to continue that collaboration? Is that something that's always works very smoothly for you? Well, I mean, I, I think that that our life is a collaborative process. Um, and in terms of what we're working on, we, we're working. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, that's what we do is we think and dream together. And, um, and, and so, you know, it's, it's too early to say what, what, you know, that next project is. Um, but we certainly, you know, have continued browsing our timelines and can continue thinking and continue projecting our dreams. And so that process is ongoing. And, uh, and otherwise I would say that our, our collaboration is, is synergistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you see the, the landscape very healthy at the moment in terms of representation on screen and the freedom for really original pieces of cinema to be out there? Or do you think that it's still a little bit closed and there's more to be done? Oh, uh, no. We, we, I mean, we, you know, we are working on it like, <laughs> like, like crazy. I mean, it takes tremendous energy and tremendous, you know, organ I mean, it's, it, it's still... Uh, there is it's it's an ongoing fight it's it's a walk in progress it's always a work in progress it's like the question of whether uh democracy is sustainable as we learn in this current age it's not sustainable if we don't fight to make sure it main it, it maintains that sustainability we have to fight we have to demand it every time um and so it's not something that's like oh it's fixed now you know not at all not at all you know so you when know, you think of representation still, yeah yeah we are still in in a in a, in a very uh I don't know. I think it's a very slow movement, um, be it regarding representation, um, gender, uh, uh, as 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 much as we can do baby steps in that way. We 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 making step in you know in yeah. backward and and it's always yeah um, yeah. We gotta stay yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, the controlling elements of of uh, patriarchal, uh, racialized, uh, capital you know capitalistic. Um, white supremacist uh industry governmental systems all those things are still in place though you know like we just because we we've, we've attached names to some things doesn't mean that we've necessarily you know surpassed uh that you know the point of 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 them losing power or what have you or, or finding a real shift uh in the narrative and so yeah there's 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 so much work to be done um there's so much you know work to be done in terms of artists finding ways to to fund their dreams and finding support um there are big power structures at play obviously um in terms of industry and and not everybody dreams of wanting to do a hundred million dollar film and 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 sometimes you feel like there's only place for that um so so on many levels on all levels uh there remains a lot of work to be done yeah and we hope that this film is is kind of uh you know um uh, uh uh, received as a gift uh, of 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 also all of that and of um, with love and and that it's um, it's possible to imagine that it's gonna you know inspire people and and to realize, realize what's possible. that yeah. that it's possible and that it's beautiful.
<laughs> and I read you, it, you know, hopefully it'll be like a cult classic, like the Rocky Horror, Horror Picture Show, which I <laughs> <laughs> that That's the dream. We'll see. Yeah, we're waiting for the theatre in London that's going to say, you know what, we're just going to play Neptune Frost from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what we're waiting for <laughs> <laughs> well thank yeah. you so much for sharing all that with me and really can't wait for everyone else to see your really wonderful film thanks so much thank, thank you, you so much thank you, thank you. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.